Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back. Or if you've stumbled across this channel, my name is Dwayne with Off Grit and today I'm going to be doing part two of my video series. Gonna be lots of parts, but this is part two of the DIY home build. We are building a steel house here in southern Arizona. Going to go into form work for the stem walls in this video. If you haven't seen the first one, you should probably watch that first. Right now what I'm doing is I am making my own concrete stakes. Uh, basically when you set up form work you need to have stakes so you can put them in the ground uh, to hold up the forms. In Arizona, unfortunately, wood stakes are not going to work. If you dig into the ground out here there's nothing but rock and caliche so you have to go with steel. I did make some square steel, uh, 5 8 inch stock um, steel stakes, however I also found that I could use angle iron and these are one and a half inch by one and a half inch pieces of angle iron eighth inch thick and basically just filed a point on the end of them also just an fyi everything that i do with my tools out here is my own business i just show you guys what i'm doing this is not osha approved uh, you should never operate a chop saw like this you can be injured but i've been doing this for a long time and i've been okay but not saying you should do this so just uh, follow along but don't give me any crap for this Next part here, I am bending rebar. If you watched the first video, I made rebar cages and this is the metal bender I, I had set up a while back. And what I'm doing here is just bending the corners here so I had can tie together the rebar around the stem wall. Basically, at the base of a stem wall, you have two strips of rebar that are spaced apart and they go inside the giant rectangle and this is what gives your wall some tensile strength. Uh, they also will tie the footers in together so everything will be tied together with rebar and so that's what I'm doing here is just setting everything up before I have to tie it all together. Since I'm DIYing just about everything out here, I might as well make my own rebar ties as well. Basically, this is a tie wire for rebar. You can find it at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. And all I do is I cut two foot strips here and I'll show you like I did in the first video how I make my own ties. It's actually a pretty simple process here. If you're wondering what this thing is this is actually a tent stake that I had laying around and I filed a point onto it and I just screw it into my drill and it seems to work perfectly I've seen people do it with allen wrenches or whatever but basically you just make some type of a hook that you can uh, you know wrap the the loops of the rebar tie wire into and then you can just use your drill to spin it in place and you'll see me doing that here 
Also, just a little tip, if you tie rebar together, the rule of thumb is 20 inch overlap uh, minimum. So that's what I'm doing here, just measuring to make sure I have the right minimum overlap on my rebar. And then I gotta do basically hundreds of ties. Also just an FYI, the rebar will be about three inches off the ground. That is the standard for doing this type of thing. And when you watch these videos, I'm not here to try to tell you how to build a house. I'm just showing you the process that I've been using to do it. You can do it whatever way you want. And I'm not here pretending to be an expert, but I'm just showing you the process. Okay, so this will test my explaining skills here on a microphone. So what I ended up doing was, you can see I ran the string lines here, and these string lines will represent the actual stem wall in between the two strings. That's where the stem wall is going to be. And what I did was I cut a piece of board, and then I take my stakes, and I set it right at the end of that string line. So that's the border of my stem wall. And what I'm doing is I'm pounding these stakes in, to a point where I will be able to be exactly whatever I set on the laser and you'll see I have a grade stick with the receiver on it. I'll put a link in the description for this setup that I got. I ended up finding a setup. I had to buy different bits and pieces of it but for about 200 bucks I got a really good laser setup that works for this. But anyways I set a laser um, with you can see here on my grade stick and I have it set exactly where I want the top of the wall to be. So what I'm doing here is I'm pounding my stakes in exactly where I need them here. And then I'll hear a long beep on this thing. And then once it's where I want it to be, then I know that I will be ready for the next step. Now it's important to point out that I have 20 foot long two by 10 pieces of board here that are really heavy and to do it by myself there's only one way I could do this so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm making a lip basically I cut pieces of 2 by 4 where the stakes are and I made a lip here and I'm gonna be screwing these pieces of 2 by 4 on the ends and you'll see here in the next section then I will be able to lift up this form and set it down on top of those stakes and because I used a grade stick I will be able to have them ex almost exactly where I want them I might have to make micro adjustments but this is just a way that I was able to do this DIY style because there's nobody else out here to help me usually you'll have a crew of people So here you can see me lifting this thing up. Like I said, it's hard to tell just from watching a video, but I can assure you this is a really heavy board and to try to do this any other way, I couldn't think any other way to do this. And for my form work, I'm doing these in 20 foot sections because we're not just doing concrete. We're actually doing stone masonry mixed with concrete. So this is going to be done in sections and the reason i'm doing it in sections and not just doing the whole wall at once is because in order to keep the front end of this this is basically slip form stone masonry and the front exposed part of the wall in order to chip the concrete off of the rock so it looks good and to keep it aesthetically pleasing i can't let the concrete dry too long so in order to do this, I'm only doing it in 20 foot sections because I'm a one man show out here. 
so that's why I'm doing it this way if you were just pouring concrete you would have set this whole thing up around the whole perimeter and just had a pour done at once but because we're doing stone masonry it's going to be done in sections and here you can see with the laser I'm just double checking my work uh, it turns out the laser that I bought has this uh, mounting bracket that has a magnet on it and it sticks right to the shipping container that is facing the house here. So I just set it at where I wanted it on the shipping container and it just stays there out of the wind. So it worked out great. And you can see here I'm just double checking everything to see if we're close on our measurements. All right, so this is going to be the last part of this video. Um, I'm really trying to break everything down to the little details just so if someone stumbles along this and needs help with the DIY build, um, they'll be able to reference this later. So I'm just showing every little step. So here, after I've got everything fitted, I screw the stakes into the forms here. And that's where we're going to leave off with this process. The next video, of course, I'll go into the final part because I got to set anchor plates because I'm using steel uprights that you'll see in the next section here. I'll show you some of the stuff that I've already fabricated. But basically, I'll be setting steel uprights on top of anchor plates and I'll be welding them to the anchor plates. And I got to make sure these anchor plates are exactly where they need to be. And that's what I'll be showing in the next video as well as a couple other things. All right, so over the summer here, I was able to get my uprights for the house here set up. I got the base plates welded to these. Basically, these will stand on top of my big anchor plates and I'll weld them in place. And you can see everything's numbered, so they're ready to go. I'm gonna have to put a primer coat on these and you know, basically clean them up and get the rust off of them. But other than that, they're ready to go. Um, this is actually for the roof of the house. These are going to be coated with a rubberized roof coating. So they're all going to be white. That's about $4,000 worth of steel there. And these are my porch trusses. I started off with 12 foot trusses for the porch and I will soon be welding 40 foot trusses for the house. So if you follow along, you're going to see that process soon. Thanks for watching.